Hard work pays off. Dreams come true. Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. Hey, yo. Welcome, everyone, back to another episode of the Hillcast. Yes, this is our second one this week, and probably prefer not to have had to have done a second one this week, um, as this episode is going to be a little different than normal. Not going to have um, our regular shenanigans. Um, this is solely to honor a legend and an icon that the wrestling world is morning today um so who better than to honor this legend than the leader of our own wolf pack aew wcw dude what's up brother hey yo there'd be no aew cw dude without the big guy the bad guy That's scott right. hall yeah this is a tough one because, you know, back in the mid-90s, wrestling was down. My interest was down and out. And, uh, and and then one day, Scott Hall showed up on Nitro, Goldberg. And he said, you know who I am, but do you know why I'm here? And that was the beginning that ushered in, you know, the, the, the era that brought everybody back and brought us all to be fans for, you know, years. And uh, I, I think that each and every one of us, you know, owes it to that guy. And, you know, like the Hawkster said, you know, Scott had his problems. He did. But um, I think you got to look at the full picture. And he brought joy to millions of fans. And uh, he didn't get the credit for it that he deserves. So this, yeah. this, is, a, this is a tough one. You're, you're, I mean, that's a great point. He certainly didn't get the credit, and it's probably because he was never a world champion, which he obviously should have been. Um, but you're right. I mean, for me, when I first started watching wrestling, it's because it was because of the invasion, because of Scott Hall, who made the first appearance, and then Kevin Nash. That, that's the reason I got into WCW. So he doesn't get his due. You're right, and and he certainly he certainly deserves it. And I I, I like to say. You know, sometimes in life, family members pass away, close family members or close, very close friends pass away, and it, and it causes people to, to unite and, and get back together and, and see each other again. And that's kind of what we're doing tonight by dropping everything and making sure we honor um, Scott Hall with a tribute tonight, um, which this is the first time it's just been me and you on the on the heel cast yeah i know it's it's uh it's it's tough to get the band together 
And exactly. man, you know, you say you can't even say that without pulling a Scott Hall reference out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, good point. You, you know, it's 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 funny Goldberg because when you think about uh, the biggest moments in wrestling history, it, it, Hogan's involved in, in so many of them. I mean, look, look, he was, but but think about it. Hall showed up on Nitro to kick it all off. Hall was there for the, the start of the NWO throughout the entire run. The curtain call. These are these are just huge, huge, huge moments. And Scott Hall was was a pivotal part of them. And just it 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 it, it killed me. And I know that his drug and alcohol issues probably played a part in it. But it killed me that Nash got all the seemed to always get the belt and the credit. Hall was the better talent. I mean, Hall was just was just amazing. I mean, the the toothpick, yep. right? Yep. Hey, hey, yo. Yep. Survey says. Yep. You you can go on and on and on about the things that that Scott Hall brought into wrestling that are still that are still done too sweet. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, things that are lasting and will continue to last far beyond his his unfortunately limited time on this earth. Yep. It, it just, just, just amazing that he doesn't get more credit. You, you, you're right. And, and you bring up another good point is let, let's talk about also how, before we even get into this, let's talk about, I, I, I always love to talk about a kayfabe is dead. I mean, we all like to talk about that. He, this man lived his character. He was his character. When you watch him in shoot interviews, he has the toothpick in his mouth, and he's talking with the toothpick in his mouth. <laughs> yep. He was, he was who he was on TV. Um, once he lost that, you know, the phony accent, of course. But once it, you know, and and I here's I wanted to get your thoughts right away on this before I forget about it because I don't want to forget this. How many guys in wrestling can say that they have two characters, which one is his real persona, but two characters that. Are Hall of Fame worthy characters with Razor Ramon and Scott Hall? How many guys in wrestling history have been able to do that? Oh man! Oh man! Yeah, man it, it's Diesel is certainly one, but potentially. I mean, I mean, I mean, Hulk and Hollywood are or is, is is a clear one. Um, it, it's not. It's 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 a real 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 small number. It really is, man. I, I'm, 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 I'm at a loss. Like, like I said, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I thought that Diesel was the same as as the Razor character either. But, I mean, outside of outside of those couple, I'm. No. Who comes close? Even maybe X Pac and the One Two Three Kid. I mean, who even comes close? It's it's not it's not a lot. It is a right. very very very, uh, limited number of people yeah it really is I, I wanted to bring that up before i forgot about it because it just it really shines a light on how on how iconic he, he really was um but let me just ask you i guess let's get into this your 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 immediate thoughts i guess i mean we had we did have kind of 24 to 48 hours to you know we kind of saw the writing on the wall but I mean, at my personally, my stomach dropped. But what, what were your immediate? What was your immediate reaction to seeing the news? I did not really know um, how to uh, how to act. To be honest, how, you know, it was just so surreal. It was just so surreal. I, I mean, it was just, it was just, it was, it was, it was. Pray for the guy. It was. Uh, is this really happening? It's so. He's, you know, it's it's so uh, he it's so soon, you know. Um, I I I'll be honest with you, I didn't I didn't process it until they said they were gonna pull the plug on life support, and that was when I was like, oh my god, I, I read right. I read Nash's post, you know. Um, yep. But 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 Goldberg, I know you said before that it was just me and you, but it is no longer just the two of us. It's great news. Pearls, man, jump in here. Did, did somebody say load? I mean, honestly, that's all you really had to say, and I'm I'm on your show for sure. <laughs> I think um, 
we, we voted, and um, I think I'm going to host for now on. I think you got you got you got pushed aside. I think I think you've been I think you've been booted out, Hurls. I think that was it, man. That that's totally fine with me because I'm happy doing color commentary. All right, isn't it the best? It Except really tonight. <laughs> it really is. I, I definitely wouldn't want to host this show. So no. Um, yeah. You hopped in. You actually hopped in at the perfect time because I was getting um, AEW WCW dudes thoughts on first hearing the news. Um, so if you want to share yours, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it kind of uh, was pretty surreal. Um, we didn't really think of anything of it. I, I think I read a report that he broke his hip, and you really don't think anything of it. You just think, oh, that's that's not good, and then. All of a sudden, you hear he had a blood clot, and it caused three heart attacks, and it's just like, you knew at that point, nothing good could come from that. So, um, and then uh, you kind of had a little bit of a roller coaster when they said uh, the life support was going to be plugged, and you read Kevin Nash's post, as uh, AEW dude was referring to, and, and then they pulled the plug, and he was still breathing, so you're like, oh, gosh, maybe, you know, maybe right. he can somehow kick out of this, and then all of a sudden... He was no longer with us. So, yeah. and I was telling you guys in the text chat that you know we wound up having the pool of fun with my grandmother, and she came out of it. She kicked out, and it was it was actually it was actually a really strange story that she would not give my father power of attorney because at the time you had to get a medical and financial power of attorney in one one you couldn't you couldn't split them up at the time, and she was afraid my father would pull the plug. Well, my aunt went and pissed all her money away. Um, because she was terrible with money, and then pulled the plug on her anyway. And my grandmother was so pissed off when she found out my aunt pulled the plug on her. But the pulling the plug is what allowed her to come back because it forced her body to kind of work again. And and Ric Flair, you know, he was given his rights a few years back, and he kicked out. So when you heard he was breathing, you were like, oh man, you know, I've seen this happen before. I've seen these miracles. And then and and then you get the note that that Scott didn't kick out. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's rough. rough, it's rough. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking back to, to when we first heard the news, and I don't know if you guys caught this, but DDP was almost the first one to to post about this. Did you guys see his original tweet? No. No. So he posted pretty much before anybody um and this is kind of when we found out that Scott Hall was just having hip surgery. But DDP posted something that it, it, it made it seem like it was a little more serious. So I think he had, obviously, he had a little uh, inside connection and knew something the rest of us didn't because he made a post, if you go back on Twitter, that he was praying for Scott Hall. None of it, it, it didn't seem that serious to the rest of us at the time. So I think he knew something we didn't. Um, and... Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you guys. Once, once I read Kevin Nash's post that that the, they were going to pull the plug, I mean, it was, I mean, my stomach dropped, and and that kind of leads me into to my next question, which I mean, maybe is is an uncomfortable question to answer, but for me, this death of Scott Hall is 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 up there for me with with Macho Man. Um, I think they're in a class of their own. Um, in, in, in the history of wrestling I think they're in a class of their own um, so I kind of wanted to just ask you both you know where does this where does this where does he fall I guess on on your on your list of guys who have just passed away way too soon um, AEW WCW dude wow I mean you know I, I mean Macho Man's got to be you know, top two, three favorites all time of mine. Hall's probably top five for sure. I probably put in terms of favorite. I probably put Macho ahead of Hall. But you yeah. know, when you're talking about that level of 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 class, now it's it's how did they die and how did it hit you? And Macho was sudden, but it was a freak accident. Right. And it's the kind of thing that you just. I mean, people they 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 black out. Right. And my uncle, he blacked out in a four wheeler and wound up in shock trauma. And luckily he lived. So I think I think this one hits a lot harder than Macho simply because I felt like Savage was just a freak accident. and People die in freak accidents. It was awful, but it was a freak accident versus I felt like Scott Hall. 
it died too soon. I, I feel like, you know, his, his heart should have been able to handle it. And, and I realized, you know, he had all the drug and alcohol and steroid issues, which probably probably put him in that predicament, to be honest with you. But, I mean, the guy was 63 years old, man. You know, like, right. I'm, I'll be 48 in a couple of weeks. This is... This is this is you know he's not that old. <laughs> he should have been able to, he should have been able to kick out a hip surgery. Um, so I think this one this one hits a little bit harder to answer the question just because of the way that it it, it went down. Um, but God, it is 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 tough. They they were both they were both real tough. Yeah, this one for me, um, this one hit really hard. Uh, probably the hardest. Um, Macho Man was bad. Don't get me wrong. It was it was tough. Yeah. But uh, when you see a guy that, I mean, we're going to get into it as the show goes on, but, I mean, he pretty much reinvigorated my love for professional wrestling. So well, we, we, we touched on that at the at the beginning before you hopped on. So if you, if you want to hit on that now. Yeah, sure. do it. By, by sure. all means, go ahead. Um, he was the bad guy that, so around when he came into WWF, um, I may have seen him in the few pay-per-views I watched of WCW, but he didn't really stick out. But when he came in as Razor Ramon, like, I remember to this day, I was a little kid. Me and my dad were going around shopping at Sam's Club saying, hey, uh, not hey, yo, we were saying Chico and, you know, all that cool, <laughs> you know, lingo that he was using. Uh, hey, man, you know, um, like he was like the first heel I can think of in my life where I actually was like, rooting for him because he had that like cool factor to him and uh yeah i just i remember his promos you know up to his debut and you know i kind of got out of wrestling for a while in 94 95 and sure enough i got back in right when he joined the nwo it was like magic and he got me back watching and i don't think i've left since and he just had this swagger this coolness factor about him that not a lot of wrestlers ever have and wish to dream of. Um, he was a guy that always, anytime he was in the ring, my eyes were peeled to the TV because he just drew you in. It was like an energy. And the NWO had such great chemistry, and he was yep. really the first member. I mean, if you really think about it. Yep. Um, it's just like, it's just crazy to lose that type of talent. Um, but on the flip side, I mean, I got to be thankful for DDP for, heck, we could have lost him a lot sooner. You yeah. know, he was in a really dark place in the mid-2000s. And, uh, you know, even after that, I mean, you know, early 2010s, it's just, you know, the fact that we were able to get him as long as we did, I'm thankful for. Um, granny he wasn't wrestling, you know, at that point. But, you know, it's still cool to hear him in interviews and his Hall of Fame speech and, but man, the, the guy was just an unbelievable talent. Um, I'm glad that uh, me and my dad went to lockdown 2010. It was one of his last matches against uh, mm. Team 3D, and it was a, right. it was a dream match. Beautiful. It Beautiful. was a dream match, and I'm glad I got to see him at least perform once because um, I think that was the only time I ever got to see him wrestle. So, wow. uh, yeah, it was uh, th the guy's just an all time great. This one hit me really hard. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. I think I, I, I definitely Piper hit me hard too, but oh, I, I have to say. that's a good yeah. one. That's a good yeah, one. you know her. You know, yeah, you uh, yeah. you Go said ahead. something, and it really hit me hard. You said about how you and your dad would you know go to the store saying "Hey Chico" and whatnot, and um, for the past twenty seven years, I don't think my brother has greeted me one time with anything other than "Hey yo." And my brother left wrestling with WCW and hasn't watched since. And my we went over to his house for a birthday party for my niece on Sunday. And I walked by him and he goes, hey, yo. And I'm like, what'd you say? He goes, hey, yo. And I was like, you know, he's on life support. And he's like, huh? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, shit. And so... I won't even be able to greet my brother the same way anymore. Because it's that's the Scott Hall influence. You know, it hit, it, it does. It, that's a great point because it hits so much harder because I bonded with my father over wrestling. I mean, the same thing. I used to sit in my father's room late 
Sunday nights for WCW pay-per-views, and my father, I don't know if either one of you guys had an illegal box to watch pay-per-views. Um, Still but... don't. <laughs> that's, that's how we bonded, man. My, my father used to get those pay-per-views for free, and we, I would sit in his room and watch the pay-per-views with him, and that was when the NWO started, and and it meant so much. Like, we, we still bond, and I called my father just yesterday, and we talked about Scott Hall passing, and it's like you you cry over these guys who you don't even really know. You never met them, but you feel like you grew up with them. You feel like you know them, and nobody can really understand it really other than wrestling fans. And it's 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 really hard to fathom that that these guys are passing away, and 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 parts of our childhood or or I, I you know even your twenties are just gone it, 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 it's a tough pill to swallow yeah it, it, it really is I mean uh, you, you you watch these guys week in week out and you're almost kind of like uh, drawn to them not really necessarily their real life but you're drawn to their right. wrestling characters and um, you grew up with them and I mean yeah they, 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 I mean Scott Hall was just that guy that you rooted for I don't even think even when he was a heel you're rooted for him. And so, there's just not many people that can do that in the wrestling business. So he me, was one of them. Let me put you on the spot on that one. Okay. And maybe it's just the old man and me speaking at this point. But uh, name one name. And, and Goldberg, I'm asking this to Hurls because I already know the answer from you. Name one, name, name one wrestler today that you feel that way about. Like you do Scott Hall. No. They, they, there's no one. Right. There's it, no one. Goldberg, I I know pockets, I know pockets, okay, but outside of pockets, <laughs> and Jelly know, Nutella. Like, there's so many, all right, there's so many, it, it's crazy, there's so many topics I want to touch on with Scott Hall. Let me throw another one at you guys, because Hurl's kind of touched on this one real quick. Did uh, AEW, WCW, did, did you ever see Scott Hall in person? I did. Well, share it. Yeah, I mean, I was at, um, <clears throat> I was for sure at the uh, at, at the Nash Goldberg match at Starcade. That would have been the last time that I saw him when he came out with the taser. Um, Pretty good one. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, that was that was the last time that was the last time I saw him. And they had some nitros in Baltimore that we went to as well. Um, and and he knew how to come out and he knew how to control the crowd. And you know, you here to see WCW? Oh. Or are you here to see the end? W O. And and it, and it was just, I mean, that's we just all screamed and 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 went crazy over him. And and everybody always. And I don't want to turn this into a negative Nash thing. You guys know about my last experience seeing Kevin Nash live. Um, but he was the better of the two by far. I mean, and just didn't get the credit for it. I mean, it was just. Um, but but yeah so yeah I, I saw him I saw him probably three or four times up with WCW, um, but the last one would have been Starcade I guess it was ninety eight um, when um, Nash took the the belt off of Goldberg and uh, and Hall came out with the Taser and um, y- you know yeah you two you both you both have two phenomenal uh, last experiences seeing him that, yeah. that, those are those are really uh, good ones. I, I just want to touch on mine too. It was supposed to be uh, Scott Hall and Six Pac versus right. Team 3D, and right. Six Pac was diagnosed with <laughs> the HIV thing. He, yeah, well, Hep, yeah. Hep C, I believe it Hep was. Hep C, uh, right? You're yep. right. You're right. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> well, what better replacement could you get than Kevin Nash for that? So Outsiders versus Team 3D, it was a dream match, and no. it was fun. It was fun. I'm not going to say it was the greatest actual wrestling match, but the brawl. Right. They brawled all over the arena, and it was just, man, I'm so glad I, I got to see him. I the last time I saw him was around the same era as you, Hurls, and I saw I went to a TNA show at the Impact Zone in Orlando, and I saw uh, Evan Nash and Scott Hall came out, and I think it was for a promo, maybe they didn't wrestle that night, and it was for I, I feel when I was reminiscing earlier today, I felt like it was something with Ink Ink. I don't know if they fought Ink Ink back then. I know Ink Ink. They probably did. Oink, oink. It was an angle with those two fucking idiots, Ink, Ink, and 
Right, Je Jesse Neal and Shannon Moore, I think. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, it yeah. was. So Chris it was an angle was for them. them. Right, and yep. and Kevin Nash, Scott Hall came out in the impact zone to the Wolfpack music, and I, me and my buddy were the only two in the crowd who, I mean, we were bowing down, we were giving them their due, and that era did not give them credit, Pearls. I, you were there. They did not give the band at the time the credit they deserved. That was the opposite for Lockdown 2010. Uh, I can tell you they were very over uh, in St. Louis. So was that was that they were not over at at, uh, at Starcade at all? Nope. <laughs> Wait, was that before or after? Because I wanted to get well. L let's just get to this real quick. What what is your favorite moment? Other let's 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 leave aside him debuting on WCW. Um, what was your favorite moment of Scott Hall? Um, either one of you, whoever wants to start it off. Oh, man. Because <laughs> um, mine's bizarre. So maybe, you know what, maybe I'll start it and give you guys a second to think about it. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can narrow it down to one, but I can do, probably do two or three. Let um, me give you mine. Let me give you mine because it's weird. So I'll, I'll start and be weird so that the, the listeners can forget about mine and listen to yours. <laughs> <laughs> so mine is, it's stupid, but it was it was one of his last times. And when he, when 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 the band got together in TNA, and, and it, on that January fourth show, was it January fourth? I think that was what the date was. Pearls, you would know. Yes, yes, when, yeah, when that Hogan was the big debuted. January fourth, twenty ten. So yeah. when they debuted, and Scott Hall jumped over that barricade with Six Pac, and they, uh, you know, Hogan led him in the ring. They said they're. They said their piece, and uh, Kevin Nash came out, Bischoff came out. It was such a cool moment for me for them to reunite. And I don't, I'm sure Hurls remembers this, but AWC, WCW, dude, you were, I mean, were you an avid, avid viewer of uh, TNA back at these times? No, I don't believe that I was. Although I have seen most of it, I was not a week to week watcher. So, so my moment is. When Samoa Joe beat the shit out of Matt Morgan, girls, I'm sure you remember that. Um, left him laying in the ring, and Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. The band music plays, and they come out, and Kevin Nash has the tag team title shot in his briefcase. Right? You remember yes. that? Yes. And yes. Yes. They come out and they pull the old Wolfpack and NWO band move, and. Um, they te they they uh, they cash in the shot, and you see Kevin Nash gets in the ring first, and you see Sc Scott Hall. They play it brilliantly. Scott Hall's leaning over the ropes, you know, begging for the tag in. You know, can you picture it? And he's, yes. he's he's begging to get tagged in, even though Matt Morgan hasn't even hasn't even breathed since they've gotten to the ring. Kevin Nash is stretching. He's he's warming his neck up, and he gets down and pins him one two three. And you know they're celebrating as if they're wiping their sweat, as if they had just just fought a you know a hard fought match and i know it's stupid and i know it's not important in his career but it was the last thing that i remember you know it's his last title reign for certain that's the last time he won a title and it's just so funny to see them pull that move again and the crowd didn't love it but i did i want to get to you guys <laughs> what was uh what was your guys's favorite moment for oh boy and how stupid was mine Yours is not stupid. Yours is not stupid. And I actually do remember that. Yours is not stupid. Yours is not stupid at all because 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 you're a mark for the WCW days, and so am I. So I mean, you know, it's only it's only uh, it's only fair. Um, wow. I mean, I got a weird one like that too. But Beautiful. let's start off with the big ones. Yeah, I got a weird one that I that kind of was a missed opportunity, but I don't know if that was WCW's fault, but. Let's start off with his first title shot, I believe, in WWF against Bret Hart in 93 Royal Rumble. Uh, I was pretty pretty excited for that match, uh, those two, for the world title. Bret Hart obviously ended up winning, but I thought it was a really good match. Um, surprisingly, the Michaels-Razor match, I don't... Like, I know it was talked about as, like, being so... And I've seen the match since, all the hype around it. But for surprisingly, that was not one of my like big moments from him, uh, the ladder match for the IC title. 
Um, I I think it was Sting after he. So he had Starcade '97. He wins the title, and then he gets it stripped, I believe, right? And then he beats Hogan again at Sold Out. I want to say. And then he, then I believe Scott Hall wins. I think Scott Hall won World War Three, if I remember correctly. Or he had the first title shot against Sting. I remember that match. Um, that was one of my, one of my favorite moments from him in WCW. But I also really enjoyed any time they won the tag team titles, the Outsiders, and uh, I remember specifically. I think it was them. Um, might even have been Starcade where Scott Steiner turned heel. Um, but I remember Scott Hall in there, and that was a really cool moment. And another cool moment was when, I want to say it was around 99, when Scott Hall was like a face, and he was a face for like a very short time, but the crowd reactions he was getting were just crazy. I'm like, that would have been the time to just skyrocket him to the world title. But... I don't. I can't remember if it was just he was having issues, which I would imagine, and it just never happened. Um, so that was probably my favorite WCW moment from him that that short face run, where he was just getting such great crowd reactions. And then he started off the uh, he started off on the first TNA show, and right. he was a million bucks right. on there too. So he looked great. Um, yeah, he yeah. did. He really did. Um, and then if I have to then go back again, to WWE, so did, so, so did Lex Luger at that point. So. Yes, yes, he still looked good. <laughs> and then if I have to go back to WWE, I mean, that match with Hogan, Nash, and Hall versus Austin, Rock, and it was a Kane or under, it might have been Undertaker, Kane, Undertaker or Kane, but that was a dream match come true. And, I mean, that was just so cool to see them guys, you know, doing their thing in WWE after WCW got bought out. So all of those moments for me were just... Just amazing, though. And then Scott Hall, like, every time he came in, he just, man, you knew it. He just knew how cool he was and how over he was. He didn't even have to try. And he had one of the greatest catchphrases of all time. So. Hey, WWW. You, you know, I mean, when you – I think it was really any time he would come to the ring and interrupt things and just start giving a promo, like – I mean, just think about all the times that there'd be a cruiserweight match going on and all of a sudden out would come Hall and out would come Nash and he would, you know, strut his way to the ring, if you want to call that a strut, and just do his thing. You went from watching what was probably a brilliant technical match that the Young Bucks would go absolutely wild over um, and Dave Meltzer would probably give 27 stars to, 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 to really, you know, one of the guys with the most charisma that you're ever going to see getting in the ring you know, giving them the razor's edge and or the outsider's edge and getting rid of them. And, and, and that happened seemingly every week and every week we marked out when he did it. That's probably my, if you take away his intro, if you take away the Hogan turn, right? If you take away those big matches, I know people like the ladder match. Uh, wasn't a WWF guy at that point and haven't been since. So, that's really not on, on on the top of my list, and I don't really care so much about the uh, you know the the curtain call either. But I think it was just what he did, and I mean, and then then he had some weird things like you know the time that he you know threw up on Bischoff in an intoxication angle. Um, that, that's kind of hard to forget. Uh, but um, but ultimately, I think for me that that was pro that was that was that's the way I want to remember Scott Hall. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't want to remember him with a taser, which was a huge moment, right? I was there for it. I, I want to remember him as the guy that came out. He didn't give a fuck. He went through the ring. He beat the people up in the ring, and he took the place over. And he, and he did it not just controlling the ring, but he did it with the crowd, too. He When he came out there, you went, Scott Hall's here, and you stopped paying attention to everybody else. And that's what I choose to remember as my moment, even though it's not one. Yeah, I mean, how many guys, how many guys, like, they, I mean, everybody, I mean, there's so many big stars in WCW, but when the Outsiders were in a match, or Scott Hall was in a match, like, they, he just raised everybody else that was in the match with him, even if it was a guy like Sting. Sting wouldn't have been able to do everything he could have done without having the NWO, 
Lex Luger. Oh, we're not even, we're everything. not even touching on that it was Scott Hall's idea for Crow Sting. I mean, we haven't even touched on that kind of stuff because I I, I know we don't we don't have a while. Um, but here's another AEW WCW dude. Did you want to? Were you trying to chime in there real quick? I I I I wasn't. I really wasn't. But I mean, it's just. You know, you, you you talk about him and the things that that he did. He just doesn't get the credit that he deserves. You know, and and Hall was a guy that didn't need to win. Hall would job them. You know, Rey Mysterio, whenever, right. just for the sake of it. You know, he he had absolutely no problem putting over some of those guys that that he liked and and, and helping Conan's career and everything else because yep. he he could. Is as badass as he was, he could lose, and 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 it didn't weaken him. Yep, right. And uh, let's not forget on Nitro, he lost to Chris Jericho even before Jericho mm-hmm. was, you know, the heel Jericho. He put over Chris Jericho, and apparently, that was Scott Hall's call as the match was going on. So I think that shows something about him that hey, he was willing to put these young guys over. He was strong. <laughs> he was strong. <laughs> There's, there's a couple more questions I want to touch on before uh, before we wrap this up. Um, the next one being another maybe a little, you know, we, we may all have a somewhat different opinion. Um, I know AEW, WCW dude has a harsher opinion than I might on this, but uh-uh. what, what, what do you think that the WWE should do? When should they do it? Have they already done it? Something left to see. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let, let Hurls, why don't you start this one off? Do you mean like, like as tribute far as like wise. tributes? Yeah, yeah, tribute. I mean, if it was me, I would have everybody like. Well, let's, let's talk about what you expect. Uh, do you expect the WWE to do anything further? No. They've only shown, they've only shown a, a, a two minute video. Um, they've shown a, you know, a, a little visual rest in peace, but are you expecting anything further? for the WWE and if you're not okay yeah what would you do I mean honestly I would have if, if it was me I would have everyone on the active roster or anyone who wants to comment on their favorite memory and what they what they remember I would run it just like Owen Hart or mm-hmm. Eddie Guerrero I would run it just like he was a part of the active roster because he made so much money for the WWE and for them not to just do a two minute video, I just don't think is enough. Like, I think you've got to, I mean, the NWO made wrestling what it is today. And I mean, yes, we can go to Hulkamania even before that, but you get my point. Like he made wrestling cool and you got it. I think you got to do something more than just a two minute video package. He's just, he's that important to professional wrestling. And I I think, I mean, even if you're Impact, I would do it, or even AEW maybe even. I I just think the guy's that important, and he never held the world title. You know, which is kind of sucks. I I would have liked him to at least hold it once. Same with Piper. I feel the same way with him. But I understand the guys never needed to hold it, but he could have carried a company. He was that damn good. So I, I I think at least Impact should do that impact show in 60 all about scott Hall. so at the very they last they won't at the very so least. you know th- this was based on wwe because t- impact's not going to do shit they may show a graphic they're not going to do anything come on pearls your golden your golden child's not going to do anything they ran a special on uh who the heck did they run a special it on? was scott hall they did a special on <laughs> scott hall this week before before he died dude that I'm was like their bef- the eight, before the, the eight, bell thing. I'm just calling you WCW dude for right now because AW sucks. Um, Impact sort of did it. They did what they always did. They blew their wad. Dude, it wasn't even dead yet. They already did the tributes. This is Christ, man. Do you think WCW? Do you think WWE? Because yes, I do think AEW. I actually do think AEW is going to do something. Whether it's a Tembo salute or something, I think they're going to do something. Um. WCW, do what do you do? You think WWE will do anything else? Do I think they'll do anything else? No. Yeah. Do I think they should do something? I think that they should just you know cancel the show for the week and play Scott Hall you know reruns, um, and then when their ratings go up, they can just do it forever. And um, 
and never show us that shit show that we watched, wondering if Cody Rhodes was going to show up. Thank God I only watched the main event, and I saw some dumb fuck dancing his way to the ring with a complete dipshit, probably makes $4 million a year, to look like a complete freak. And um, I, I'm glad they're paying them well for work because you have to pay me even more. But that's a different story. Um, uh, in all fairness, he should have. Um, they knew that he had passed before the show started. They should have brought everybody out on the stage and done a ten bell salute. I, I don't necessarily agree with Hurls about the whole. And again, I'm putting myself, I'm putting a corporate hat on here. Um, you know, have people spend all this time talking about him because most of their roster probably didn't even know who he is because he's so damn young and the 10 year olds that are, that are watching that idiot dance around would not have no appreciation for Scott Hall anyway. Um, so your point is proven when Kevin Owens, uh, said, Hey, yo, did you guys see that? Yeah, I did not. Thank God. Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens started his promo with a, Hey, yo, and the crowd had no, the no idea what the fuck was going Jeez. on. Jeez, he, he tried, tried to show a little class, class and they just like, we yeah, don't, but, but you know whatever it is. You know what? WWE, first of all, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt because <laughs> I do believe, I do believe they're going to do something else. I don't think this is it. And the reason being because he technically had not passed away when that show started. Yes, he had. Yeah. Yes, yes, he had. He died, he died around six. He died, he died, he died about an hour. Actually, actually it, was, it was seven, seven because, because he had died at six Eastern <laughs> or six Central here, time. So here's they knew. Out, here's what I'm holding out a hope for. I'm holding on hope that they're doing this next Monday because Kevin Nash couldn't have been there. Obviously, they were all maybe probably at his bedside or saying goodbye to him. Kevin Nash, Six Pac, and the rest of the, you know, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, even Hogan. These guys need to be in attendance, and they need to be there for the 10 Bell salute because he, if he doesn't get a 10 Bell salute, I'm officially on board with you guys. WWE is trash. And, and, and I don't mean their storylines because that's been trash for years. So they can give a 50 bell salute, dude. After after all this shit that they did to all the people over the years, man, they've been garbage since. They've all. They've gotten, been garbage for 30 years in terms of class, man. Right. They've all gotten 10 bell salutes, and Scott Hall, we know, more than deserves it. Oh, and absolutely. No reason, and he's come back every time there's been a reunion, I, a raw reunion. He's been there every single time. This man deserves a show dedicated to him with his picture in the bottom left-hand corner the entire time, a 10-bell salute, and Kevin Nash should open the fucking show and say words with X-Pac to his side, should say words about his best friend, and and that that's the only way that this should be done. And if it doesn't get done, if Kevin Nash is not in the ring holding a microphone, either on SmackDown or Raw, I am, I am appalled. Dude, Dude last time, time I saw Kevin, Kevin Nash hold a microphone, his ass was drunk. drunk. And it was, it was embarrassing as shit. And I was in attendance telling my wife, this is unbelievable. I let this drunk fucker come out here. You gotta enlighten me, because I don't think I I don't think I'm 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 into what you're talking about. I, I went, went to a Maryland I went to an MCW show, Maryland Championship Wrestling, and Kevin Nash was there for a signing. They brought him out to do a promo and he couldn't put two words together. He slurred his voice the entire time. He was drunk. Oh, it was it was back, back about the time the Hardys were doing their. Uh, their it might have been at the show where the Hardys won that belt, won the MCW belts and did it at Impact. It might have been at that particular show. Yes, because I think that was the last MCW show that I went to, and I swear I would never go back if they put him in the ring drunk. I, I was just, I was absolutely, and he was. I mean, he could, he couldn't, he could barely stand. He stumbled the whole way to the ring. He slurred his voice the whole time. I mean, at the end of the day. That's his brother. That's his best friend. Oh, I understand, should, but you give, should say words. Assuming, assuming he's they can get him sober to do it. I mean, at any rate, I, I digress. That's that's my issue with, with with Nash. But the guy deserves more than he's going to get. Let's leave it at that. From, that's from me. I, that, that's the bottom line of my question. And yeah. I hope, I hope this is not the end, and they give him give him something else. Hurls. I know you were trying to say something. So, so. well, I was going to ask you. Did you see the NWO Hall of Fame? I mean, that was absolutely terrible. They gave him, what, two minutes? And that was horrible. Like the most rehearsed speech I think I've horrible. ever heard. Absolutely I mean, horrible. I, I, I mean, I get the fact that they all kind of went in before as solo, but no. I mean, goodness, you got to do something more than what they did. It was just absolutely awful. No, I'm not expecting uh, 
WWE to do that. Uh, what, did you rather have Flair's induction speak? I mean, Jesus. Oh, hey, that was good. I mean, it was two or three hours long, but man, he had good story. And I, I'll tell you this, though. Like, I, I, I don't think it's going to be on Raw. I think if they do do that, it's probably going to be on SmackDown since it's, you know, a lot closer. So hey, Either one. They should do something for this man. Mm. And, and I agree. I, come on. They have to. Uh, you really think they're not going to do anything further? <sighs> I don't know. Like, what? I feel like the fact that they put it off that and didn't break the news – they, they could have been they could have been breaking news by doing that and it actually would have helped their ratings and they didn't AEW may do a tempo salute why wouldn't well what are you going to bring up TNA again no because it's already taped so they're not going to do a 10 no, no they, 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 they'll, they'll put a, they'll put a graphic up and say in memory of like they always do yeah the belt 10 times over the graphic yeah. They won't ring the bell, but they'll put a graphic up. They, that, they typically just put a graphic up, and I think that's what they'll do. Yeah. I mean, he's not as important as he was to WWE because they own WCW and Razor Ramon character. Fair so enough. WWE has to do he, it. He was a big part of TNA for a while. Well, he so. was. He was in the beginning, and he had like four runs in TNA. <laughs> Let's not forget that either. Yeah. He had yeah, a he ton of runs in TNA. And- Hurls, real quick, we'll get we'll get uh, we're gonna wrap this up pretty quickly, but we're, we'll we'll get your thoughts real quick. If we touched on this, um, his the fact that he kept his character, he lived his character. Um, he was who who he played on TV, and every shoot interview he did was with a toothpick in his mouth. And he was Scott, he was Razor Ramon, he was Scott Hall. So if you want to, you know, touch on that real quick, and then I got one more question for you guys, and. We'll, uh, we'll 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 get this we'll get this wrapped up. He, yeah, you're you're exactly right. I mean, he was who he was in real life. I mean, him and Nash, best friends, played it out on TV, played it out in real life. There's really not more much more you can say. I mean, the guy just. We're. I mean, the wrestling business hasn't been the same since he's left it, or at least has been an active wrestler. So. Let's not forget, he had one of the coolest finishers ever. I mean, the edge, whatever you want to call it, Razor's Razor Edge, Outside's Edge. edge. Yep. I yep. mean, the, the finisher was amazing. He had one of the greatest fallaway slams, one of the best punches yep. you'll ever see being thrown. Oh, probably the best. Yes. I mean, just everything about the guy. Just That's a great absolute point. legend. That's a great one. Yep. Should have been a world champion at some point. That's about the only thing I can think of that he didn't get. But other than that, he basically did it everything. So I'm going to ask you guys one more question real quick. AEW, WCW, we'll start with you. Um, I'm going to ask you one question, then we'll give our, you know, we'll give our final thoughts. But, you know, we, we've touched on the fact that he, he pretty much created, by appearing on WCW, he pretty much created that war and he pretty much created, um, you know, he, he got a lot of new viewers from that. I, I wanted to ask you guys, if that never happened, and him and Kevin Nash, and it starts with Scott Hall, but if him and Kevin Nash never came over, which led to Hulk Hogan, which led to the NWO, would we have a heel cast today? Would we be talking about wrestling? Because if not, then then this man, it, it's it's the most... It's just the most under he's the most undervalued wrestler in the history of wrestling. If 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 the answer's no. Would we have a heel cast and, and would this would would AEW exist? Would it even would would they have the fan base that they have? Would 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 wrestling have the fan base they have today, which significantly has dropped through the years, but would it still exist today? WCW did. Well, first of all, I, I answered that question the intro, right? There would be no AEWCW dude without Scott Hall. Um, his bring of the about of the NWO brought me back to wrestling. Okay, uh, and there's absolutely no way to diminish the influence that he's had on me as a wrestling fan. Um, the, but I think anytime you get into a what if scenario, what if somebody else had come over and they did the same storyline, and you know, 
what if that other person did the same thing? I think you can what if it until, you know, uh, the cows come home, right? But regardless, it doesn't really matter because he did it. And he absolutely is the most underappreciated wrestler in the history of professional wrestling. Um, you know, even even Piper gets a ton more love than Scott Hall does. And people, they just, they, they look at Scott's problems that he had, you know, with drugs and alcohol. And they, they just don't recognize the fact that his are maybe a little bit more publicized. The other guys had the same issues. A lot of them did. Um, he had demons, but, but my God, when you look at the good things that he did and the joy that he brought to wrestling fans and what he did for millions upon millions upon millions of viewers, I, I just, I mean, he's trusted when I tell you, God welcomed him with open arms. I mean, yeah, there's really not much more to say. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. If he doesn't come over from WWF to WCW, we're not getting the competition that we got. We're not getting the NWO. We're not getting WCW reaching the heights that it can only dream of. I mean, we're not getting so much. We're not getting millions of people talking about pro wrestling in the late 90s. We're just so many things that just kind of had a domino effect because he came over and did what he did. Guy still was, was doing great things even before it, but I mean the heights that they took the business and we haven't even mentioned the contract situation mm. of wrestlers getting paid because of Nash. Very and true. So Very true. just, I mean, the list goes on and on and they were the, the, we could only ever hope that wrestling even comes a fourth as popular as it, as it was when he was with the NWO just did absolutely yeah. I mean, it's just crazy to think about if he doesn't come over, though. Yeah, you know, I just want to say, WCW, dude, that's a great point. Um, trying, kind of trying to picture if it was anyone else coming over. It's a, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a question to think about. If it was anyone else, would it have made the impact that it did? And you know, you 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 want to say no. You'll never know. Obviously, at the end of the day, but. The way he came through that crowd and the way he came in the ring and there was a match going on at the time if you guys remember. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And Two idiots, but there was a match <laughs> going on at the time and he stopped the match. He didn't beat anyone up. He just got in the ring. He got on the mic. He said, you, you know who I am. You don't know why I'm here. And the match never continued. And week after week, you just felt like it was real and obviously social media has ruined that to a certain standard today but you felt like it was real you didn't know if this guy or his Kevin Nash were really employed by WCW or not and I, I don't really think that if it was anyone else it would have made that big of an impact because I think he was the perfect character and perfect person to do it um, not to mention he was a huge name at the time in WWF so but so let, uh, I'll give you guys the floor, you know, for some final thoughts. I'm sure we've we've aired out pretty much everything um, that we that we wanted to say. But if there's anything else you guys want to touch on, I, I don't want to, you know, cut anyone short. So either one of you, if there's anything else, go ahead. I I just think, um, yeah, we pretty much said everything. But uh, referring to who you were, who the who the match was with the it was Mike Enos. <laughs> who was formerly of the Beverly Brothers. And Steve Dahl, I believe he was a jobber, obviously. I thought it was like uh, Jerry Flynn. I think it was Steve that may Dahl. Have been, that, that may have been another match. I, I think that was another one. Because he kept interfering. He kept coming through the crowd and stopping matches. I, I think yeah, Jerry it might have been Jerry been Flynn at, yeah. at some point. But, I mean, but uh, the guy is just was a, a, a mega star and uh, man we're, uh, it'll be hard pressed to ever get another Scott Hall ever again and I hope oh, his I son that. I hope his son does something because you know what it's too bad that he hasn't really made it no I... whether he makes it or not that kid should be on on the, on the tribute uh, I'm sorry I keep hoping they're going to do a tribute but he should be there WCW dude go ahead I'm sorry yeah, now Cody Cody Hall really hasn't been active since 2020, so he's not 
uh, doing a whole lot. If you look at his Twitter bio, it's like, you know, please, I'm taking bookings. You should hire me. <laughs> it's yeah. not, it's not um, looking real promising for him. But I mean, those are super huge shoes to fill. Uh, as as far as Scott's concerned, I mean, I, I think we've said everything, you know. But hey, look, guys, it's it's a downtime. It's a bad time. But what the bad guy always say? Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. And I think that that's how he would want us to treat this as, hey, hey, yo, right? These, these are bad times, but they're not going to last. But he will. And I think to remember him that way, that his influence is going to be with us for years to come. And I think that we should just appreciate him for what he was and I think the three of us did but continue to appreciate him I think that's the legacy that he leaves and that's just it's an amazing legacy to leave behind and you can always watch his matches all his greatest moments he'll be on probably every video game wrestling video game for at least a long time so yeah, there's I just ways wanna, to still I, I do I want to say one more thing personally is I mean, I said this earlier that, that people in the real world don't get the bond that wrestling fans have with wrestlers, and they never will understand it. And to a lot of people, it's a joke. But for me, I did sh shed some tears over this, and I could probably shed some tears right now if I really let myself break down. And um, I just want to say I love him. I love you, Scott Hall, and it's a sad day, and... He's a he's an icon. He's a legend, and he'll go down to history, and he'll never be forgotten. So, um, yeah, I think I speak for us all when, when I say we love you, Scott. Yep. So, um, yeah, if you guys want rest to in peace, bud. Rest in peace. Yeah. You earned it. Yep. So, uh, yeah, with that, uh, that's our our tribute. The wrestling world will continue to mourn, and I I just hope I really. Really hope that WWE and Vince McMahon do something else for him because we we all know he deserves it. So, um, with that, this is the heel cast. Uh, rest in peace, Scott Hall. Hey yo. See ya. <laughs>